welcome everybody to the 52nd edition of uh, Vision Durel International Film Festival. This is the first day of the festival. I'm very glad to be here with uh, Lisbeth de Kuller, uh, director of All Good, that we are very glad and honored to present in our international competition in world premiere. Thank you very much, Lisbeth, for being with us. Well, thanks for having me and organizing this festival in difficult circumstances. Yes, it has been difficult, but it's also very good that we have this tool that we can uh, that can link us with the public uh, out yeah. there. Uh, and I would also like to remember our audience uh, that they can they can write questions uh, and that we can uh, receive them here uh, during uh, our debate. Uh, so uh, I would like to start from the beginning. So if you can tell us a little bit when this project uh, was born in your head and what has been the trigger to it. Well, I, um, I officially started working on the project. Uh, I started writing on the project in 2013, but actually already before that, I, uh, I got fascinated um, by the idea of extinction, animals and plants uh, going extinct, and moreover about uh, the, uh, the human hand, the human interference in this, um, in this happening. It seemed to me that, um, that more and more animals go extinct. We always uh, hear this as well, like by the end of the century, so many animals will, will be extinct. And uh, so I did uh, some research and I read all these stories and uh, yeah, I was, I was blown away by that. And also on the one hand you have that, but then on the other hand, I also noticed that there's a need inside of, uh, of, of humans, maybe not all, but um, for this natural and wild world that is something that we, that we yearn for and that we need in our lives. Um, so I was uh, fascinated by this tension between those two and also about uh, climate change. And there the idea was also, okay, climate change is happening. And um, I, I wanted to go to, play, to a place where we could already see that happening and that people already really have to deal with it. Um, um, so uh, this, uh, these two research points, they came together in, in Yakutia, uh, where I found this, for, first I found the story of the mammoths um, who, who went, in, went extinct. And it's, um, well, most accepted uh, theory about it, that it's uh, uh, went extinct by um, uh, climate change and by uh, humans having better tools. So the two already came together in the story of extinction. But then when I, when I found out that um, because of the current uh, rising temperatures, the uh, carcasses of mammoths and um, um, the tusks are uh, coming up out of the melting permafrost and uh, that you have both these tusk hunters who go and look for the precious ivory and that on the other hand you have scientists who go to look for a viable cell because they want to try to clone uh, the mammoth. So there's the story of extinction but also de-extinction. And of course, also in the north, uh, there well already this story, but also you see you see the rising uh, sea levels, you see the water rising, and you see the effect of it on the land. So um, yeah, those two points uh, came together in Yakutia in in in, uh, in the story of the mammoth. And um, after some trips there and, and meeting people, I also uh, I also wanted to find like a, a current story, like I, I wanted to tell the story of extinction but I didn't want to make a historical or a in, in, informative uh, movie. I wanted to make something that was happening now and where we could see it with our own eyes. This, this happening was, was very much important for me. That's why there's all, also practically no interview in it. I didn't want to have people uh, tell about it, but that we see it and experience it uh, as it is happening in front of our eyes. And so um, something that is, is, is happening is a changing in the population of, of, of reindeer. So I also wanted to incorporate that story and it all came together in, in Yakutia. And uh, you, uh, the film has two, let's say two main protagonists and in a way they are linked by the mammoth or they are linked by personal quest. Mm -hmm. How you were scouting them and how you met them well, um, during my first trip to uh, uh, Yakutsk, I, I had a, a, a meeting, a pre-arranged meeting with uh, Semyon Grigorev, the scientist. Um, it's very easy to, to read about him and his work in articles. So I, I had a meeting and I, I, we talked about the project and I, I, thought, I talked about my ideas. 
and uh, he was interested in, in doing the film and well over the, the well between 2013 and 2018 when we did the filming there was a lot of talking I went there a couple of times uh, uh, to talk with him um, so that was a pretty straightforward meeting that had a lot of time to develop uh, over the years and then um, how I met the two brothers uh, was a total different story because when I when I met Semyon, I went uh, I, I left the city of Yakutsk. Yakutsk is a city that is very easy reachable with all um, uh, well it's, it's an easy big city uh, and but then I traveled to the north to a, a small town uh, called Kazachi. And I went there actually because I was interested in working with uh, tusk hunters. And apparently in that village, uh, I could find a lot of men who were tusk hunters. Um, and when I went there, um, I met a couple of tusk hunters, but it didn't, for me, it didn't seem that like this, the story was complete. Like I didn't want to tell uh, just the story of the mammoth. For me, that was just a means to, to talk about extinction and de-extinction and how we, how we deal with our nature. So I, I was curious to also um, uh, hear about other animals. And actually I had, um, when I was there, I stayed, there's, there's like no hotel or no place you can officially stay. So you have to stay with people. And um, this translator and fixer that we worked with, um, he uh, arranged that we were staying just in a family's place. And while we were talking to the Tusk hunters, we also had contact with this family. And um, they, they showed us all these pictures of the tundra and their life on the tundra and hunting, gathering berries, fishing, uh, how, they, how they spent the night there. And I, I got uh, completely fascinated by uh, those images and by those stories, but also about uh, by the, the, the man of that family, Klim. And it turned out that he, um, when he was younger, he had a film education in, uh, in, in St. Petersburg, I think it was, but he never really did something with that afterwards. He returned to his village and uh, he was very eager to, to work on the project as well. And I also saw that there was a good connection and that I could really explain my ideas to him. And so um, when we left there, we didn't have uh, uh, these specific characters to work with, but I did have this very important uh, fixer who, who, who I explained uh, with what kind of people I wanted to work. I knew that the, the older brother, or at that point it could have still been a father, that it would have to be somebody that really knew the land and knew how to, how to live there and really embodied it. So it was actually Klim, the, 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 the man who became the fixer, who, who looked for uh, Roman and then his uh, younger brother. But also this process was, um, it was very much a sort of a ping pong between him and me, like, you know, there were propositions of me but of course I couldn't like uh, describe an actor or something you know it had to be something out of reality I don't I don't work with actors that's not what I was after so there were propositions a lot of conversations and then there was Roman and I was like okay does he have a younger brother okay he has a younger brother in Kazachi but he also had one in Yakutsk so um, actually the reality influenced um what who the characters would be and well of course who he looked like was influenced but by the, the 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 portrait that I I gave him and actually the two brothers I um I hadn't met them before I went there to film so we had like uh, a bit more than two weeks of filming and the whole process of us getting to know each other uh, getting to know the project figuring out what the project would be I mean there was a definite setup you know there was the journey there were the, the idea of the reindeer there were scenes fishing hunting teaching how to hunt camping that was there but um us, me, Ali, getting to know the, the, the two brothers, it came gradually throughout the filming uh, process. Yeah, So it was very different than the scientist. And so this uh, getting to know each other, did, did you, do you think it influenced the filming itself or? Yes, very much. Because I always imagined that I, 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 before I went there, I had like a so, sort of a frame of the story that I wanted to tell and, and, and the basics were out there. But I, I knew in advance that I had to leave enough space for them to, to be themselves and, and to fill it up with their characters and that they also had to uh, needed the space to be themselves so they could fully um, be free in the image actually. Uh, so there was still a lot of space and again through a lot of uh, conversations what, what did they want to be often it started with me observing something in reality and then uh, creating a, an idea around a specific scene proposing this to them 
um, most of the time they didn't immediately say, oh, that's great. You know, there were some addings or some interpretations of, of that, but they had uh, total freedom. I think that's also where the, 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 the magic of, of the film lies in that they really incorporated that we, there, there were also some scenes that, that we filmed and that didn't make the movie. And most of the time that was because not everything was right and we weren't all in the same direction. So yeah, but also there were times that they said like, no, no, I would never say something like that. And then we started looking for, okay, then what, what would you say? So it was really like a, a working together on it, on, on the project. We, we, we did um, more talking about the scenes and, and preparing the scenes than the actual filming. And I wanted to ask you, since the beginning, very beginning of the film that it starts in a totally different setting uh, because we are like in, in very, contemporary uh, laboratory that uh, really top of, uh, of our idea of uh, how where scientists could work. And then uh, suddenly we are, uh, as you say, in the tundra in the, at the end of the world almost. And those moments are linked uh, by an history and the film is inhabited by, by mythology. It's, uh, there are scenes and there are moments that to me are very strong in, in which the the, the memory of those big animals or, or the memory of the, this very far away past uh, come back. And how did you work on this aspect and what has been the importance for you of this mythology in the writing of the film? Yes. Well, one way that I looked at the project already um, from the very beginning was that um, how, how, will, how, how will a person talk about this moment in a, in, a hundred, in a hundred years, for example? Because when we talk about things that have been in the past, um, it's easy to um, mythologize something or to make it, uh, or to say who are the heroes or who, who, who are the, it's easy in the past, but I, I, want, I wanted to try to look at it um, um, as now, because to me, the film, um, I mean, science and science fiction or um, mythology, dream, uh, all those things are, 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 are very close. And I, I think that if, if we would look, um, if, if, if we will look back from the future, that's how, how, it, how it will look like. It already feels like that, you know, this whole story of extinction, of de-extinction, bringing back animals and, and especially a mammoth, which is like an iconic um, uh, extinct animal. So I really wanted to, um, 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 mythologize it and also that um, I, I did a lot of research um, with local institutions there to try to look for as much as um, stories on mammoths or, or stories that, that were, were, were uh, related to it and I saw a lot of uh, resonance in it and I also for example the main uh, story the main myth that we follow that comes back a couple of times about the father that wants to teach his son um, it's it's an old story. It's impossible to date when exactly uh, uh, it was created, but it's it's something that could still happen. We look at it as an old story, but it's something uh, that could still happen. Yeah. And it's interesting that you talk about uh, what we can define like future archaeology or like uh, how our, in a way, what uh, one day we will also become like the mammoth and what will be our the rest of it. And I think that in the film, especially in the second part, uh, the, the shot you do of the landscape and the way in, in which the hunt, uh, in which we see the, the hunter working, it's reminding a lot of, uh, of, as you say, of science fiction and myth. And these uh, plus uh, the work you did on the sound Mm -hmm. is really creating the impression that we are in in another planet or in in a sort on in another time mm -hmm. uh, was this for you an important uh, aspect uh, when you, when you were editing or um well to me first um uh, during the research when i went to these places it it it, it was the feeling that I, I got there when you have this abandoned uh, um mine town or you have these um uh, these tusks and these other bones of these extinct animals these uh, tooth of these extinct animals it really it feels like a, a, a ruin which which makes it like uh, which gives it a, a futuristic feeling and then 
um, but also for me, like the, the fictionalizing idea, for, for me personally, there's, there's no clear boundary between fiction and documentary. It all flows into each other. Like what is very important in the film is the, the element of, of the dream. Like you said, uh, both, story, uh, both stories in the film are like quests and um, also working together with the characters. I mean, if they, they uh, well, at the end, we go into a sort of a, a dream world with them. And uh, for me, it's their dream. So there we can debate, or is, is it fiction or is it reality? Because they are clearly acting, but they are acting as themselves and they're acting, of the, uh, they're acting out the ideas that are in, in their mind. So also the work on sound, yeah, the, the sound design, um, I did it with uh, Quinten van Latem and it's, it's, it's super important for me to create this atmosphere because I think it's like a, this uh, under the skin feeling that you give with the movie and that also uh, makes you look different at stories because like you said, at a certain moment, there's these landscape uh, and, uh, uh, images or, or that we film the underground and it's really the, the sound that makes you um, think, okay, there's more to this, what's going on there. And this focus on the underground, it's also, well, it's where the, the mammoth is. So it really makes you wonder uh, what's there. And the sound that we use, it's like, it's like this shepherd stone. It's a falling sound that draws you under. So we, yeah, we really uh, worked on, 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 on creating an atmosphere with, with sound, yeah. For me, the sound was also important uh, in, in, in a way in which when you were talking about the climate change and uh, mm -hmm. in the film, it's really, we can feel it and we can listen to it because the idea of the permafrost melting and the sounds that this very specific uh, soundscape that it produces and also on the way how they are trying to like uh, work, as they say, this is impossible, this is still frozen, pure frozen land. So I think that there are passages in which, uh, in which the changing between the, the ice and the melting of the ice is very hearable also. Well, that, than, uh, that's definitely something we worked on. Before the filming, I had this idea that I wanted that if you watch the movie, that <clears throat> it would feel like that every shot you could, um, you know, how you do yeah, it, yeah. Fine, you know, and yeah, then yeah. the water drips out. So uh, in some shots, we use a technique that we could... Um, a glass, uh, uh, glass frame in front of the image, which we um, 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 may put uh, water on so that you could yeah. really feel the image as, 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 as being wet, as, as all this abundance of water, this, this um, um, yeah, this abundance of water. And then in the soundscape as, as well, we worked very much on, on, on having this, the, these melting sounds, well, different kinds of water sounds. We were also at the sea. Um, um, that you really feel this being uh, amidst the water. And again, that, that comes back to the idea that I, I wanted you to feel to be in there. Like there's almost nobody really talking about uh, climate change. The two brothers have a very short uh, conversation about it, but I didn't want to give an explanation about it. Also, I felt these are, um, well, it's not an informative film and, and I am also not a scientist, so that's not what I wanted to create, but it was more this, this, this feeling of being surrounded and almost drowning in water that, that I, I, I wanted to create. Thank you very much. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the introduction scene? Ah, yeah, the introduction scene. Um, <clears throat> well, it's uh, the first shoot, so we filmed for about uh, five, six weeks in uh, Siberia in the 2018. But uh, a couple of years before that, in 2015, we went to uh, Seoul in South Korea to uh, one specific um, uh, laboratory, SOAM Research Center, where they um, work with, um, where they do experiments on cloning. They work with many animals, with uh, uh, cattle animals, but also with dogs. And the Mammoth Creation Project is one of their uh, prestige projects. They work together with the university in Yakutsk. And um, that scene is, like you, you mentioned earlier, that scene is really, um, uh, that introduction is really there to create this uh, uh, scientific feeling because I, I also wanted it to be broader than a story about nature and hunting. I wanted to, to, to 
that that you would look at, at the hunting in a, in a different uh, view and we uh, we made a, well we combined these images of the laboratory with um, uh, the old story the the, the myth of Holgood where the word Holgood is also explained and uh, Noah um, so already there you have a lot of connections you have this almost science fiction images with this old uh, story. And this old story is actually, it's not in Yakut, not in the Saka language, it's in Yukagir language. And Yukagir are peoples who live um, um, in the north of Yakutia. It's, it's a huge state, uh, Yakutia, and they live in the north. And uh, they are actually uh, uh, from origin like uh, reindeer herders. And they had this story, and I was very, very lucky to find the story and to also be able to record it in, uh, in, in that language because there's only about 40 people still left who speak that language. So also that language is uh, slowly disappearing. There might be a, a revival, I hope so. But then so in, in the beginning of the film, we all already wanted to well create an atmosphere, but also already have all these connections about the, 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 the stories, the mythology, the science fiction part, the mammoth is present, but it's not only about the mammoth too, so yeah. Thank you very much. And I have uh, one last curiosity and the drawings that appear in the film. Yes that uh, in a way are very, yeah, also very evocative and they are like uh, accentuating the dimension of the dream. Where do, how do you, when you decide to incorporate them in the film and um, what, what's their origin? Well, when I was doing research, research about mammoth uh, mythology, um, there were stories, but uh, there were, of course, also drawings. And um, there, are, there are different kinds uh, of drawings that we use in the opening scene as well in, in the laboratories. You already see these different um, uh, old drawings of what people thought the mammoth was, because when we first found the, the bones of the mammoth, um, people didn't know how to put them together. Uh, there were thoughts that it were cyclops, that there were angels, that there were giants, you know. Uh, so that's also already, those drawings are there to kind of um, um, lift that idea. But then in the movie itself, um, I use these drawings. Um, well, one of the things that I found was this um, uh, little book with drawings of also people who lived, it's not the Yakut, but who lived in the uh, uh, in Siberia. And um, well, a lot of these um, groups of people, these communities, they didn't, they don't have written um, um, uh, his history, or only oral. And uh, when, um, when Europeans came there, they wanted to record it. And these people, they made these little drawings and it's it's just wonderful because they draw reality mixed with their gods, mixed with their beliefs and everything. And um, I, I based, and, and then there's also in the film, uh, the scientist Sam Yon, who also makes uh, uh, drawings. And uh, I worked with somebody here in Belgium who made these uh, uh, three drawings uh, that are in the in the film, but also that was a way like uh, with these stories to uh, lift this feeling of, of of mythology and to try to look um, what is behind reality. I think that's a it's, that's a general thing that I try to create in, in in the film also with these dreams. It's all okay. There's there's a reality, but what's behind it? And I think that's also maybe my. Uh, uh, urge as a, a director that I we can film reality, but that what's inside the mind of the people um, um, that you're working with. So that's where that comes from. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I would like to remind our audience that the film is available for 72 hours online, so don't hesitate uh, to watch it. And I look forward to meet Elizabeth in person in a few days here in Neon. Yes, thank you. I'm also very, very much looking forward and good luck with the festivals for. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Have a nice evening. You too. Bye. Bye.